Hey everyone. So today we are going to resin these three pieces. It'll be um, a series of videos I'll put into one. Um, but I wanted to show you start to finish. So I have these three panels that I did about three weeks ago. Um, these are on birch board so they cure just a little bit faster than canvas because they don't have to breathe through the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to get silicone off and how to prep your piece for resin. So as you can see I have a ton of cells in these which is all silicone. I did rub them off a little bit with baby powder um, about 10 minutes ago before I put them up here. And now I'm going to show you how I wash them. I didn't used to wash my paintings, but since I've been using better paint now, I'm not as afraid. So I do wash them with uh, Dawn dish soap water. So I have some in my bucket here. You'll probably hear this in the microphone. <laughs> it's right under the microphone. So it's nice and soapy. And that's what I want. So I'm going to make sure that I get all these washed. You don't want to rub on your edges because you may um, take some of your paint off. So I try to get as close as I can. And I'll go do it to the next one. We're going to do this twice to make sure that we didn't miss any silicone. Now, another thing you can do um, is leave your baby powder on these for a few days and let it soak up and then just um, use a spritzer and a lint-free cloth to clean them before you resin. But I like the dish soap. Um, it seems to me that it gets more silicone off. Let me just squeeze this out. And I don't have to worry about having any resistant spots. And if I do get one, it's not a big deal because I do two coats. So you really should do two coats of resin. One just doesn't seem like it's enough. Alright, so I've got them washed pretty good. You can see there's bubbles on them. Alright, so now I'm going to rinse. So on my wash water, it's just a little bit warmer than my rinse. And I'm not rubbing really hard. You don't want to scrub. You just want to let that Dawn dish soap do its thing and get all that silicone off. Now, if you're not using silicone, you could probably totally skip this step and just clean them off with a little bit of water, get your fingerprints off, make sure you're wearing gloves because your hand oils will do the same thing that silicone does. Your resin will not cover hand oil. So it's gloves the entire time that you are prepping and the entire time that you are resining. and dry them off with a paper towel. Um, it's not lint free, but I'm going to clean these with alcohol so it's not really going to matter. So this is pretty much a two to three day process to do these paintings with resin because I, one, I like to do them and give it a, a lot of effort so I don't have to go back and redo them. So if you do it right the first time, you should have a good result. All right, I'm gonna let these dry for a few minutes and then we'll come back and we'll clean them with the alcohol. I'll be right back. Okay, so they're good and dry now. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and clean them with alcohol. I'm just using a simple little white washcloth. You can use a microfiber cloth for this too, um, but I wanna see how much paint I pull off. So I always have these, I call them my rags, but they're actually a nice washcloth. <laughs> So I'm using 91% rubbing alcohol. Well, actually, it's isopropyl alcohol. I always used to call it rubbing alcohol. So I'm just wetting my rag. Let that set for a second. Let it soak down in, so I might be able to flip. All right, same thing with this. Watch your edges so you don't take your, ta your paint off. Alcohol dissolves acrylic paint so you have to do this quickly if you feel any resistance whatsoever stop because that means it's um, getting sticky so now the other thing too I don't like to use the same area and I do not throw these away I wash them and a load all by themselves. All my shop towels go in one load and they get a double wash. I do a lot of stuff out here with towels and rags. So I'm just cleaning, making sure I'm getting as close to the edge as I can, especially where I see a lot of cells. That's probably where there would be any silicone left over. All right, I'm gonna do this one on the end here. I made these for my living room, so I'm not being too particular. But we are pulling a little paint off, and that's fine. It's not hurting it. The design's still there. It's not showing sparse anywhere. We're good. So, Rule of thumb, pro tip from me, <laughs> I let these dry at least three hours before I put the resin on. So, being a hair on my video, you will not have to wait three hours. <laughs> so, we'll let these set up and I will bring you back and we'll start our first coat of resin. Okay, are we ready to resin? <laughs> so this is um, part B. This is your hardener and this is part A, your resin. This is Stone Coat's Art Coat. Uh, this is UV protected, heat resistant to 475 degrees, zero VOCs. You don't have to wear a mask. However, I always tell everyone you should wear a mask. Um, if you've never used resin before, you may want to wear long sleeves so you don't get it on your skin. You never know if you'll have an allergic reaction to resin. Please, please, please try not to touch any part of your body um, when you have resin on your gloves. You have to wear gloves um, because you don't know if it will burn you or not. So I've been using this for three years, I think, maybe a little bit longer. I know I'm not allergic to it. I have not had any problems with it. So this is why I stick with Stone Coat. It is very safe for me. And um, I probably would never switch because I've never had a problem with it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up enough for those three birch boards. Um, it's probably going to be about uh, maybe four ounces to do one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up probably two and a half cups because I wanna make sure I can dome it. I'm not gonna worry about the sides at all. However, I do want to, and this, let me just tell you something else too. When you're working on birch boards, if you wanna tape off your sides, I leave the tape on. Now I know that this tape is sealed. I don't have to worry about any resin getting up underneath that tape because the paint has already sealed it off for me. Um, on the back, it's already taped here, so I don't have to worry about the resin getting up in here as well. 
So my goal is to just make sure I get enough resin on this very edge and dome the top. So when I say dome, that means getting enough on here that it's not going to run over on the sides. Okay, so I love to put the hardener in first. This resin part is so thick that you really don't want that in your cup first because it will stick to the bottom of your cup. So we're going to go ahead and put the hardener in first. I think I'm going to do... Um, I think I'm going to do a cup and a half. I'm, just, I'm always questioning myself if I'm going to have enough. Alright. And this is equal parts on the art coat. So I'll do a cup and a half of the heart or the resin as well. This part is very thick, so I probably have to squeeze the bottle. So I'm going to bring that up to three cups. These are big jugs. <laughs> I don't normally get these great big ones, but this is what Mitch sent me. It'll get lighter as I do more work, right? Okay. So I like to catch it in the cap and then put the cap back on. Okay. Stirring. I always start along the outside edge to work that hardener through the resin first so it won't stick. And I'm sorry if I'm out of breath because I was running around here. <laughs> so much to do. So I like to stir my resin for about three minutes to make sure um, I don't have any strands of the resin inside the hardener. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this and we'll be back. Okay, so I wanted to bring you back on the last few seconds of stirring just so I can go over a few things with you too. Um, when you're stirring resin, you want to make sure that you're scraping your sides to make sure none of that resin part is sticking. And when you do that, clear your stick, scrape it down, and stir some more. What you're looking for when you're stirring is to make sure you have no strands. This should be crystal clear. You will have some bubbles from stirring, but you want that crystal clear with no milkiness in there at all. And if you have to pick it up and put it to a light, do that too. It's just taking that extra step to do this process correctly. Okay, I think we're good. I don't see anything moving in there. Now, another thing too, I use my hands for application. Um, if you're going to use a tool to spread it, um, you might want to go through it with your hands a little bit. It just ensures that it's properly stirred and that mixing that on there as well helps to make sure that you don't have any stickiness. I'm just going to move this a little bit closer to me. Get that out of my way. Alright. So go ahead and wipe me stick. I'm going to set this down because I really don't need it until I get ready to scrape. You do not want to leave this in your container for very long. If it starts getting warm, hurry up and use it. <laughs> do not leave it in the container. It will heat up. It may even start smoking. Alright. So it's nice and cold right now. But usually by the time I get to the third piece, it starts getting warm. So I'm just moving it around, getting all those edges first. Um, if you're watching Mike on Stone Coat when he does his countertops, he says save your edges for last. Um, doing artwork, you want to make sure you're getting your edges first. sure I get that little tiny lip where my tape is. 
and you'll see why when we take the tape off, why that was important to leave the tape on from start to finish. Okay, I don't even see any bubbles. So this, I, this is my first coat. I'm not too concerned about um, fuzz. Um, I, you know, bubbles, yes, but not fuzz because we're probably going to do a second coat and we will need to cover it anyway. So, so just run your torch. Watch your bubbles pop. Okay, that one looks great. So I'm going to move that forward and bring down the next one. Same thing. which is good because I have a couple of paintings I want to throw a first coat on. Um, if you're really worried about the whole silicone issue um, with resin, you can put one coat of varnish on before you resin to seal your painting. That way if you see any silicone, you can address it before you use your resin. So you'll be able to clean that spot with alcohol and when you do your resin it should fill in perfectly fine. If you've done a piece and you have alcohol, alcohol yeah, resin, uh, silicone resistant, I'm sorry guys, I'm super super tired. <laughs> um, you can um, just hit that spot with um, alcohol and do a second coat over it. And if it's your second coat you can you can do three. On a birch board you could probably do four or five and get away with it. I like my first coat to be nice and heavy and then the second coat I don't have to worry so much. Perfect. Oops. Make sure I hit it. Nope. Alright, so let's do the last one. generous with this uh, resin so I want to make sure that everything's covered I am getting a little dome on it where I'm leaving the weight of the resin on the top of the birch board it's starting to cool down here so my studio is not as warm as it used to be, but that's all right. These will be set up by the time I work on them again. And when we do our next parts, so I'm going to take you all the way up to finish on this set, just so you can see what uh, you can do with birch boards. I get these from Jerry's. They are six by twenty-four and they're two inches deep. So I tape right up into the uh, lip. I'll just make that a little bit. That's all right, I'm gonna hit it with the torch. Don't be afraid of resin, guys. It's just too much fun. <laughs> these sit for 15 minutes and I'll give them another torch and then um, I'll move them to my um, resin coffin I call it <laughs> dust free zone and of course I'll be checking to see if I have any fuzzies 
Best way to get a fuzzy out, take a tip of your glove, touch it, and wipe off, and then hit it with the torch and make sure it's gone. It's kind of like just taking that dust out. But we will be back, guys. So stay tuned. Okay, we're on day two. These came out beautiful. Um, the only reason I'm putting a second coat on is because I have a couple tiny, tiny, tiny little fuzzies right here. One here and one here. So, But I wanted to do this video for you so you can see how to do a second coat as well. So we're going to take some 220 sanding paper and we're just going to lightly sand over the top of that. Now, if you're within 12 hours, you don't have to sand. I'd like to just to give it that extra tooth, but you wouldn't have to. So all this is doing is giving tooth to the piece so the second coat um, goes on better. I've done it before without sanding and it's fine, but I don't want to take the chance. Do this one. And you will get some on your sandpaper you might have to flip. Okay. So now I want to wipe that off because I don't want that dust there. So I'm just going to take a soft towel and we're going to push that off. I'm going to run my hand over it just to make sure I got it all. You will feel it if it's there. But you don't want to leave it there because you may end up with some little spots in your resin. Alright, so we need to clean that off. Got my microfiber cloth. My 91% alcohol. It's very hard to find right now, but you may be able to get your hands on some. Okay, so we're just prepping the surface for the resin. And I'm only going to do one of these at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up the resin like we did last time. And then I will bring you back. So stay tuned. Okay, our resin is all mixed. I mixed the same amount as we did last time because I did end up putting it on a set of tiles and a few paintings with the leftovers, so I'll be able to do the second coats on those as well. So they are all ready to go, and this is ready to go as well. So I'll put my stick here because I may need it later. So we're just going to do the top here. You're going to find that you may use less resin on the second coat because you know you've already taken care of your sides. and So we're just covering this up. But you want to make sure you cover it all because it's already shiny, you know. That's another reason I like to um, sand in between coats because you'll be able to see where you were before. And I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna worry about getting it perfect because I'm gonna torch it and it's gonna self level anyway so let me torch it I always 
just do the little side to side view to look for any definite dusties that need to be taken out first. They'll get another torch and another double check before I uh, put them in the dust free zone because these will go inside the bun rack tonight. I left them out last night. That's probably why they got a tiny couple of tiny fuzzies, but that won't hurt them any. I sanded them out. Now I'm stuck. Alright. So I'm going to grab another one. I could probably work on two at the same time. These are so much fun to do, guys. You don't have to worry about your canvas sagging. You don't have to worry about your sides because you're going to either gild them or stain them. All right, let's get this moving. I normally work really fast. <laughs> But for tutorial purposes, I have slowed down to help you. I do not want you to be afraid of resin. It's, it's just so beautiful. And if you take the time and get used to it, then you'll become a pro and you won't want to use varnish at all. <laughs> it is expensive, but it's worth it. Not all buyers like resin either. I've had a couple of them say, I know I don't want resin, I want the varnish. And sometimes they want matte varnish, so it's up to your buyer, you do what they want. Alright, let's torch these. I already see here, I might have missed a little bit. So you can pick some up on your tips of your gloves too and do it. It's not like varnish where you have to make sure it's perfectly smooth because it's going to continue to move. Alright. So I'm going to let these set for 15 minutes. I'm going to give them another torch. I'm going to put them in the dust-free zone. And when we come back, it will be the next day. And we'll take the tape off and finish them up. So thanks so much for watching. We'll be back. Okay, they are done. They came out absolutely beautiful. So, now we have to take the tape off. I'm gonna go ahead and move these two. And I'm gonna take the tape off this one so you can see how I do it. A little bit on there, I was taking the bottoms off to give me a head start. <laughs> Don't drop them, they'll be all right. Well, let me put them down. Okay. All right, so I already took the bottom tape off, so that's not drippage, it's just laying there. I wanted to get it started so I could show you. All you have to do is just pull this tape, and you're gonna get spots that, you know, stick with the tape, but that's fine. You can get it started with your fingernail and pull it off. And then when I'm done with this, um, I like to take my X-Acto knife and just run it on that edge to get any loose pieces. And then it's finished that way. It's really not as bad as it looks right now. It's just I'm at a different angle, so I usually pull this way. Let me see if I can get it started this way. I went around the corner, so 
I have to uh, break that tape. Why is it when you're filming? <laughs> Nothing starts right. <laughs> under there but usually you can just pull like that and it comes right up but because I already ripped the tape down let me show you how I take this corner here so I'll just run it right on that edge and I'll just peel that off that way you have a nice clean edge and if you have just a tiny bit of paint that gets underneath there if you're painting the side silver or gold, it'll cover it right up. And I'll show you. Oh, I don't have one out here, but I would show you how it comes out. Hang on a second and I'll show you. So, like, I did a box, hex box top, and I had one little spot that had blue paint on it, but you can't even tell once you put the silver over it. So this is how it will get finished. This is um, titanium silver gilding. And I'll probably either do that on the sides or I'll paint them um, the gray wall color that I have in my living room. And then I'll put like a dragonfly glaze or something over it to make it sparkle a little bit more to offset it. That's it, guys. Easy peasy. Resin from start to finish. And if, if, you, if you definitely are afraid to do birch, um, just start with small ones. Start with some little 8-inchers to get the hang of it first. Once you learn how to peel the tape off. And you want to make sure you use a good tape. Once you learn that, you'll be putting resin on all kinds of stuff <laughs> but so for that project we use the stone coat art coat two coats one sanding in between if you remember um, down below in the description is a link to take you right to stone coat if you want to order um, it's my affiliate link so I make a few pennies off your purchase so I'd appreciate it if you went through that link if you're gonna buy some resin and we'll have more resin videos coming up. Um, I did a bunch of boxes, finishing them all up. If you saw the bloom videos that I did. Um, this one is already sold. And I sold the long one that I did already too. But I have bunches of them and I have tiles and all kinds of stuff. We are doing an auction um, October 10th at 7 p.m. It is a Saturday night. And I'm gonna have probably 30 or 35 pieces. Um, I have a lot more than that, but I'm just going to do 30 or 35 and probably put the rest in my Etsy shop. So if you're looking for Christmas gifts, come join the fun. I'm going to have a few resin pieces to auction and a bunch of beautiful paintings that Ellen and I have done on Monday nights and on videos. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments, and I'll answer if, if I can. If you want to reach out to me, just hit me an email at christinawalchart at yahoo.com. Thanks, guys. Bye now.